Coming up on today's episode, how Robert Heron tests HD TVs. Google TV, it's getting closer. TiVo Super Remote, the myth of digital component video, and of course the Blu-ray releases for the week of October 12, 2010. This is HD Nation. Today's episode is brought to you by GoDaddy, Jack Threads, and Gamefly. Check out Gamefly.com slash HDNation for a free trial account. Welcome to HD Nation. I'm Robert Heron. And I'm Patrick Norton. HD Nation is your guide to the best in HD content and the best in home theater gear, no matter what your budget is. Blu-ray, online, satellite, cable, over-the-air, thumb drives, whatever. If it's in <laughs> HD, we like it. Even yeah. if it's hamster-powered and transmitted on stone tablets. Beautiful. Pixels. That's all I want. Beautiful it's hamster powered, so pixels. be it. Get the ham. We need more <laughs> hamsters. Speaking of more Spin hamsters, that's a scary concept, dude. OLED, HDTVs, almost dead for now, anyway. Sony backed away from OLED earlier this year. It's like the organic light emitting diode that was going to change the universe by having more saturated colors like a plasma and be warmer and whatever. According to Reuters, Toshiba has actually decided to take the plant that was going to make OLED HDTV screens. Well, they're going to make regular old LCD flat panels to meet the ridiculous demand for glass. LG might produce a 31-inch OLED screen for the price of a small Korean import car. In the future, maybe they currently sell a 15-inch OLED in South Korea, but for now it looks like the next gen flat panel technology is flatlined. Yes. yes. Too expensive. That's my Ooh, quick take on stupid it. Stupid expensive. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, Toshiba has started selling a pair of glasses free 3D HD TVs, a 12 and a 20 inch Regza models that will sell for $1,500 and $2,900 respectively in Japan, and that's according to Fast Company. Now, glasses free 3D HD TVs are notorious for not looking as good as the goggly e kind, and they require a very specific seating position. Toshiba says these displays are for personal use, as in an audience of one sitting exactly 90 centimeters in front of the 20-inch display. It's, it's early, but I have some hope that the glasses free tech will get better. Yeah. If nothing else, it'll make good signage. That's really what I'm... I'm <laughs> You're all about the 3D sign. There is some other technology where you can have multiple seating mm -hmm. positions with one of these type of glassless or it's glassless 3D displays. Report. It's going to be a tough thing, though, to make that work without the glasses, though. But, hey, you know, but I'll never say no. Doesn't catch up to I'll movies. never say never or impossible in this darn HDTV industry. <laughs> Speaking of impossible, 1080p video conferencing. Um, excuse me, that's uh, telepresence, Mr. Norton. <laughs> I think that's what they call it when companies spend a lot of money on it. It's not video conferencing. It's a telepresence system. Skype. Yeah. No. <laughs> okay, well, check out Cisco's UMI. Excuse me, UMI. Cisco's UMI is basically they take their corporate telepresence technology and bring it to the living room. 1080p live streaming of your internet connection supports it. Brace yourselves, 1.5 megabits per second upstream for 720p, 3 megabits per second upstream for 1080p, which I am willing to bet none of you get on a regular basis and probably couldn't get for a 30-minute phone call if you're from my cable television provider, or should I say cable internet provider, the, the old cable modem would be cable internet. Dun, da, da, dun, da, da, dun. And by the way, you also have to pony up $599 for the hardware, plus $24.99 a month for unlimited calls, which is really funny because this is all IP-based stuff and nobody charges for VoIP except for Cisco, who's going to give, basically it's 25 bucks a month so you can receive video messages Man. hosted in the cloud. It might be good for businesses. I don't know. It seems kind of expensive for the, the average Joe out there. I can see some people where, like, grandma or grandpa or, or the cousins would like to be able to communicate to each other in, in glorious high definition, watching, I mean, like, my child sprint from one side of the living room to the other in modern, HD. Modern game consoles are doing that right now for a lot less money. So if you really, I don't know, <laughs> any grandma a PS3 or an Xbox 360 might not be the, the wisest decision you've yeah. made. But. The Yumi interface is pretty good, but I, I would be really, go home, run a speed test, let me know what your upload speed is. I'd be I curious. Think about, I think about four and a half up yeah. on a good day. Yeah, for if, what? If the winds are a right. month? Uh, 50, let, 60. Let, let me, let, let me. More let, than, what, I, more than what, I should what be paying. You, let, let's see how long you can sustain three megabits up from, from well, I'm going to say yeah, it from yeah. Comcast. I'll say good. it. I said it Comcast. Yeah, they're, my, they're my provider. Yes, yeah, so they're get, mine too. I get a nice burst of speed. Burst. Yeah. 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 Uploads you pretty. Can have, you can have your freaking 50 <laughs> megabits per second one web page at a time. 
I don't get that fast yet. I'd have to pay more, okay. and I'm already paying enough. Anyway, Google TV, people, this week's update. Logitech announced the review. $299 includes a set-top box and a wireless keyboard and remote. The set-top box that combines the innards of a Harmony remote system, a.k.a. the Harmony Link technology, with the Google TV platform. So this will be able to perform all the Harmony remote activities. That's what Harmony calls it, or Logitech's Harmony calls it. When you press a button and the HCTV turns on and the Blu-ray player turns on and the lights dim and the chorus sings in the background, basically clustered groups of switching things on and off or switching them to the right channel, um, which is pretty cool, actually. And because it's using the basic Chrome browser, you're also going to get Flash and web page support, search functions, and probably sometime in 2011, app support via the market. No details on whether the review will support all Android's apps that are currently available, like for the phones and tablets, or if review-targeted Google TV applications will run on Android handsets. Totally. I think the big yeah. feature here is the search tool that will work across the internet, the connected storage devices you'll be adding, and electronic programming guides as well. Now, Dish users can get a review for a discounted price of $179, nice. and those who pony up the $4 a month fee will also be able to search their Dish DVRs. So it's that whole convergence deal there. Now, the remote will be wireless. It will be a wireless keyboard with a D-pad and a trackpad for on-screen menu navigation. Logitech will also release a smaller, more compact remote, similar to the Denovo Mini remote for $129. Users can also buy full-size keyboards and remotes for $99. It's just a plethora of purchasing accessory yes, options. accessory options are all yours <laughs> now. Review will also support smartphones with a remote control application. Uh, one nifty feature includes transferring a video uh, viewing session from a smartphone to connected review and via the Harmony remote like actions, the review will power up the required devices like the HDTV to continue watching it on the big screen. Hmm. Now Logitech also showed off their HD capable $149 webcam that enables the review video chat function via the vid HD app that's pre-installed on the view on so the review basically what we're saying review. here is if you want grandma to see the kids sprinting around in HD you should buy a review plus the HD camera which will still come in under the cost of the Yumi uh, yeah. Cisco might have you there but we the wait months. with braided breath for the ship date we do we do it's gonna be exciting I bet you hate shopping for clothes you gotta leave your home theater you gotta leave the house go to the store look at a bunch of crap that probably looks as awful on the rack as it would on you. Luckily, that era is over, because, well, we've got Jack Threads now. It's a members-only online shopping club. They do the dirty work for you, and they save you a boatload of cash. Everyday Jack Threads serves up the hottest new indie brands at huge discount prices. We're talking about 80% off what you pay in the store, and they've got some really solid brands like Kid Robot, The Hundreds, and one of my personal favorites, American Apparel, for way less than you'd find anywhere else. Jack Threads is a private club, but fortunately, HD Nation's got a hookup for you. To get access to these awesome deals, go to jackthreads.com slash HD, and you'll get to skip the wait list and become a member right away. And did we mention that it's free to join? Do yourself a favor, hit jackthreads.com slash HD, and you can instantly start saving up to 80% on your next set of clothes without having to leave the house. Normally we roll out one of our infamous and rather inaccurately <laughs> named top five lists at this stage of the show, but we're going to pick Roberto's brains about what she's watching. What, what's, what's top of the chart for you this week? Uh, under, under much duress, I finally got around to watching Avatar. And I got to say, for a two, three hour movie or whatever that was, it wasn't bad. Good sci-fi. So I'm the last person in North America you that haven't has seen not it? seen Avatar. You know, that would have encouraged me to wait even longer then if I hadn't known that. Anyway. I knew I should have bet you on that. I did spend uh, most of this week, though, uh, setting up some new HDTV test equipment cool. that I recently purchased. Uh, one of them being something called the X-Rite i1 Pro. It's a spectral photometer. No, spectral radiometer. Uh, I want to make sure I get that right. There's two different things I picked up. The spectral radiometer, the i1 Pro, is actually, uh, it works as a way to measure the characteristic of light including the spectral, basically the spectral distribution of the energy. Mm -hmm. So say red is not just one particular wavelength as right. far as most red that you'll see, except they can be actually. Anyway, this one allows <laughs> you to measure that, that spectral characteristic of a light source, but the other device I picked up is something called, uh, x Ride also makes it, it's called the Hubble Spectrophotometer, and that's more like an electronic human eye. It okay. kind of gives me a reading off of, say, a TV screen or a projection screen that would mimic closely to what the human eye is seeing. Because most people that test HDTVs, they throw on their favorite TV, they go, wow, that looks really awesome. I'll give it nine stars. Um, after, like, counting the number of HD oh. 
ports, on, HDMI ports on the yeah, back. That's and, not a and Making sure the remote control looks like a remote See, control. See, subjectivity is always important mm -hmm. for, for part of, of a review process, but you've got to be able to measure something or to analyze what's coming off the screen to set it properly. To, to get, there's a spec, a very, a very detailed spec that's been worked on by scientists for you know, a couple of decades now, and having tools like these is what enabled me to actually take accurate measurements and then mm -hmm. provide accurate results. Or if I'm making adjustments to know I'm getting it just right. And then all of this is being driven by a fabulous piece of software I picked up called Calman, actually uh, from the company uh, called SpectraCal. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is probably some of the latest and greatest software there is as far as driving the tools that I'm using. And I can actually use both of my color analyzers together, in a sense, to create like an Uber analyzer oh, wow. that would be worth, say, I'd have to spend about, say, 30 grand to get something of equivalent performance in uh, the combination of these two far less expensive devices that I picked up. They're still expensive. All, none of this stuff is cheap, but... It's still worth more than my truck. But finally, I've got some good tools under my, under my belt. Actually, it's, it's filling up a, a large Pelican case, I think, full of uh, equipment now. And uh, I look forward to just tearing into some of the sets you've seen us playing with here on the set and, and to get some calibrations done out in the field for people in their homes. Uh, nothing like, nothing especially. Like somebody's got a home theater room set up mm -hmm. with a brand new gear and going in there and getting it dialed in and putting up the first couple of eye candy movies for them to take a look at and just to say, like, here's how it was before. Here it has after. What do you think? And it's like, ooh, ah, thank you. Anyway, hey, it's time for the new Blu-ray releases for the week of October 12, 2010. First up, Three Kings. This 1999 film starring George Clooney, Mark Wahlberg, and Ice Cube features a 1080p transfer and the 240 to 1 aspect ratio with a DTS HD 5.1 master audio mix. It's a heist movie that takes place in Iraq during the Gulf War. Roger Ebert described it as, quote, a screw-loose war picture that sends action and humor crashing head-on in into each other and spinning off into political anger. Extras on this disc include additional scenes, the director's video journal, a tour of the Iraqi village set, an intimate look at the acting process with Ice Cube, and an on-the-set featurette, as well as two audio commentaries. Next up, Lost Boys, The Thirst. Bet you didn't even know there was a sequel, did you? In fact, this is the third movie in the series. The second film, Lost Boys The Tribe, was released direct to video in 2008 and is already available on Blu-ray. Now we've got the third film, filmed just last year, which is also being released straight to video. Corey Feldman is back as Edgar Frog, Vampire Hunter, who reunites with his brother Alan, who you will recognize from the original film, and they team up to fight an army of vampires who use a drug made from vampire blood. This release features a DTS HD 5.1 master audio mix and comes with a DVD and digital copy of the film. Extras include featurettes titled What is the Thirst, How to Kill a Vampire with Edgar Frog, and The Return of the Frog Brothers, hosted by Corey Feldman. Also released this week, but on Friday, October 15th, instead of the usual Tuesday release, How to Train Your Dragon. From DreamWorks Animation, this 2010 film takes place in a mythical Viking world where a young Viking team bucks family tradition, and instead of becoming a dragon slayer, he befriends his dragon. This film got incredible reviews, and while it is a kid's film, it's one that has something for everyone regardless of age. While this film was released in theaters in 3D, the 3D version of the Blu-ray remains an exclusive to the Samsung HDTV bundle. The standalone Blu-ray release is only available in 2D. But that's not a bad thing, as the transfer is apparently quite impressive. High Def Disc News says that the black levels are, quote, like ink, and calls it the definition of eye candy, and, quote, the definition of reference material. So if you saw the film in theaters behind those dimming 3D glasses, the vibrant colors are sure to impress. Extras include 45 minutes of featurettes, as well as an hour-long making of documentary. Other releases this week include Bangkok Adrenaline, the BBC High Definition Natural History Collection, Callus Forever, Christmas Classic Gift Set, the Criterion Collection's The Darjeeling Limited, Dio Holy Diver Live, Dollhouse Season 2, 2009's I Am Love, Jonah Hex, Kevin Hart, I'm a Grown Little Man, Ladies and Gentlemen, The Rolling Stones, Leaves of Grass, 1978's Magic, The Criterion Collection's The Magician from 1958, Mega Piranha, Red Dragon, Sandman, Sex and Lucia, Warren Miller's Dynasty, and Wolverine and the X-Men, the complete series. It's time to thank one of the sponsors of today's show, GoDaddy. Looking to drive viewers to your video content? Then get a .tv domain name and stand out from the crowd. 
.tv domains are perfect for podcasters, video bloggers, anyone with something to say, and they're available now at GoDaddy.com. And remember, you can download GoDaddy's free iPhone, Android, or BlackBerry app to order right from your phone, manage your current domains, and more. Want a discount? Just use the code HDN8 to get 10% off any order. And be sure to check out revision3.com slash GoDaddy for a list of all the amazing GoDaddy deals from Revision 3. Somebody pointed out on Techzilla last week that we never mentioned the TiVo as being an awesome box for streaming Netflix, Revision 3, iTunes, and quite a bit more. Possibly because, well, most people ask us for boxes that help them get rid of the cable box, and the TiVo is so tightly bound with cable or satellite service, like HDTV service. It, it's, 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 it's pretty much cable only at this point. Yeah. It, it, Unless you've got some older TiVo hardware out there, and you're rolling, <laughs> rolling that with your, your cable satellite service. And TiVo, oh, it's tangent, but they pushed the, the, the delivery date for their direct TV TiVo box back to 2011. Stop doing that, TiVo. Get the out there. There's, <laughs> a lot of, direct TV. there's a lot of direct TV users out there and customers and subscribers who'd probably like to sample your, your wonderful hardware. The, the, the latest round of DVRs from direct TV weren't bad, no, but... Not at all. While it is the most excellent box, it is not flawless, as Robert can tell you, since he lives with his TiVo daily. And he has paid for the lifetime service, which means he will live with it for as long as humanly possible. And uh, Mr. Heron actually leapt on the opportunity to review the latest TiVo remote, the legendary TiVo Slide. Can if this is ninety dollars for this thing, dude? It is Hold a list on price. One moment, well, Robert. List price of ninety bucks. In the corner. Let me hustle back here. Yes. Okay, my old remote. I'm gonna put that in my pocket. Or we have that up for comparison purposes. That is the Bluetooth adapter with its 18-inch extension cord, and here is the what? No double stick tape. I came, it comes with it actually. A little, <laughs> a little thing of double stick Velcro. So if it's if you needed to place the Bluetooth receiver in a in a unconventional position, you can stick that baby on there with some Velcro and reposition it to your heart's content. Uh, I will say uh, what's in the box is exactly what we're showing you here. Uh, the remote itself, a couple of batteries that I've already put in, this adapter, and a little pamphlet to tell you how it all works. That's my Series 3 remote. That's it, called the, the Glow Premium. It looks like this receiver, it looks like the original remote, only more compact. Totally. They've Except. really done a pretty good job, and they've actually added some more buttons to the smaller, uh, to the TiVo slide, which is kind of interesting. They actually added this series of A, B, C, and D, like you'd see in a lot of Blu-ray players, and I was like, huh. That'd probably be some extra functionality there, but the nice thing, that's about 8.1 inches long. This is about 6.1 inches long, so you shave about two inches off of it, and it's heavier. This thing is, this could do some damage if you flung that at somebody. Yes, it would do that some is, damage. That uh, weighs about, I believe, 18 grams or so, <gasps> more so than the, uh, yes. By far, the feature that everyone's been waiting for in the TiVo platform forever is a freaking keyboard, so we can actually type yeah. into, say, the search fields or the other fields that are now available in the ever-increasing uh, 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 capabilities of the TiVo. It's kind of, I mean, it feels like a, a, a over-engineered over cell phone. It's very burly. It's got that feel to it. It has a built-in light sensor so that during the day, the backlighting system won't kick in, but it, it seemed pretty nice. As soon as it started getting dark in the living room I was using it in, boom, the backlight was kicking in just nice. It's a pleasant uh, whitish backlight across the whole keypad and the keyboard. Is this mostly for really searching through categories on your TiVo or programming things? Or? Totally. They have a nice uh, swivel search feature and TiVo search built in, and also any of the fields. Like There are so many additional functionalities that TiVo's added over mm -hmm. the years, especially with the latest HD units and the network connected units. If any field that you had to type text into, you had to use the remote, regular remote control going through a, a, a virtual keyboard that was insanely it's very slow to use. And this finally makes me explore some of the features that I haven't actually messed with very often. So you know what? Now that I can just pop this open and tap, 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 and boom, do, do, an, do a search really quickly for a specific subject, I, I found myself using those features within the TiVo a lot more just because I had that remote. Good to know. Yeah. Easy to set up. Any issues with the Bluetooth? Absolutely not. In fact, it's ridiculous. You, you could not even, you don't even have to plug in the IR or the Bluetooth mm -hmm. if you didn't want to and just use it as a standard infrared remote that should be compatible with every TiVo out there. However, if you want to use that keyboard, you have to use the Bluetooth connection. Got and it. that's only compatible with the latest Premier uh, TiVos, uh, also <laughs> the Series 3 that I have, uh, TiVo HDs also. So, so don't buy this if you have an older TiVo. I wouldn't, no. And I've seen it online for about 20 to 30 Third, almost $30 off of the list price. Mm -hmm. So shop online for it if you can. Bottom line is, if you, if you have a TiVo and you've always, you've never explored any of the alternate functions that are available either through internet or or just some of the, the searching that you can do through the TiVo platform itself, 
there's no other keyboard. Right. The, the, unfortunately, TiVo hasn't added a way to plug just a standard USB keyboard in. This is the first product like it that I've messed with, at least. And I got to say, I want one just just for that, the functionality alone. I put this in my pocket because you did encounter the Bluetooth, the wireless RF connectivity created one difficulty for you. Yeah, it's true. I'm used to my RF remote, and if I can just put it in my pocket when I go run to the kitchen real quick. It doesn't matter if I accidentally hit a button or something, but I found that because it is a wireless device, <laughs> pushing buttons like accidentally when I'm reaching into the fridge or something, it does trigger the thing. And suddenly I noticed channels were changing and other stuff was going on, even though it wasn't pointing <laughs> directly at it. Range was a minor issue that I did run into, actually. I ended up, I tried it first by plugging it into the back of the TiVo without the extension mm -hmm. cord. Close range, it was okay, right. but I really got better reception by getting this out from behind all of the other gear I had it with and getting it on top of the device, where more or less a line of sight style, style view. And I was also distance wise, it, if you have line of sight to this receiver, it's almost, well, I'd say it's at least 20, 30 feet. But uh, beyond that, uh, isn't the whole point of Bluetooth not having to have line of sight? Yeah, <laughs> I noticed like if I, if, like I had a computer monitor in the same room, and if I put it behind the computer right. monitor, for some reason that was causing interference with it too. But overall, it was just it, when it when I'm sitting in the couch and, the, and the, the rack is in front of me, everything worked just great. So, so thumbs up. Had you exploring components, totally. like, it said parts of your TiVo you'd never explored before. Yeah, if, if you've never, if you've avoided certain functionality on your TiVo just because of the pain it is to input beep, text. Beep, beep, yeah, beep, 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 it's just typing beep, a single beep, word, beep, and let alone you get something beep, wrong, you got to go back and forth trying to get right. back to the menu. Hopefully, it didn't erase what you just typed in. This was just really nice. It was just a keyboard as fast as I could type. Mm -hmm. uh, it it did buffer on my Series Three a little bit when I'd really go aggressive and type really quick, but it would always catch up incorrectly. And the other thing was that I'd imagine on the on the faster catch up perf correctly or incorrectly, it would catch up correctly. It, okay. would, it would buffer it, but at the same time, you'd see it suddenly burst all the text onto the screen <laughs> in the order that I typed it in. I would imagine on That's the Premiere so TRS eighty seriously on, on the Premiere uh, TiVos that have a little more extra oomph in the CPU. I think that would be less of an issue. You probably wouldn't notice any kind right. of uh, hiccups like I did on my older Series three. That's still running just great. Viewer questions when we come back right now that we got to thank Gamefly, one of our sponsors, and they are the largest online video game rental service out there. We're talking about 7,000 new and classic titles across all consoles and handhelds. For just $15.95 a month, you can get, well, you can if you're a Gamefly member, get one to four games at a time, keep them for as long as you like, no late fees, no due dates, and they bring it to your house. Just like that other sponsor we mentioned, you can never have to leave the house again if you can figure out the food thing. Anyhow, once you're done playing a game, send it back. Gamefly is going to send you the next available game on your list. And if you really like the game, well, click keep it on the Gamefly website. You get the game at a discounted price. Gamefly is going to mail you the Casey Manuals free of charge. If you're an AC Nation fan, you can score a free two-week trial if and only if you go to Gamefly.com slash HDNation. Some restrictions do apply. See the site for details, please. Support HD Nation by supporting our sponsors like Gamefly.com. Hey, Seuss writes in. Hello, Patrick. I recently came across an HDMI to component cable that may be handy for hooking up my four year old projector, which doesn't have HDMI, to a Western Digital TV Plus. I believe it's an all digital signal between these two formats. Am I wrong? This could cut down on the clutter of wiring a switch. It seems like a neater option. Am I sacrificing some quality by going to this option? Thanks for your help. Signed, Hey, Seuss. Well, it doesn't look like it, but WD's TV, HDTV, WD TV HD Plus or the Live Plus, WD TV Live. One of the four versions they oh have. Oh, my goodness. It, it does component it out via dongle. Uh, it just doesn't have the three plugs on the back of the box, which is what you should use for your projector. HDMI would be neater, right, having audio and video over one cable, but that special cable you link to from Amazon.com will not do the trick. Uh, component video actually carries an analog signal, not a digital signal. Now, if for some odd reason uh, the WDTV actually has the ability to push analog video over the HDMI, which I'm not really holding my breath on. Probably not. Um, this cable might work in, in theory, maybe, uh, but the audio side of HDMI won't work because there's no way for your projector to turn HDMI digital audio into something that your speakers can use. I'd skip wasting money on the cable. You, you might notice there's a whole bunch of one-star reviews of it. It, it. it would be beautiful, but the reality is going from HDMI to component requires a fairly sophisticated bit of electronic glory. I mean, you're basically taking a digital format, you're changing it to an analog format. It requires 
some HDCP action. Uh, or an expensive box to get it yeah. done. And besides that, you have a product that has natural native component video output. You just need to get that dongle cable. Yeah, the problem is you got to then wire the, the audio separately, but you know it's either that or replace your projector. That's a lot cheaper, though. A nice 20-foot yeah. AV cable, but just to, just to run sound through, maybe left-right stereo. Roll with it, man. Or take that optical out of that WD product and, and run that receiver. into your AV receiver. There's many ways to get that done. <laughs> There's too many ways to get that one done. <laughs> Good link, and we are actually, for people who have asked about it, we are taking a look at the HD Fury in the near future, which promises to basically allow you to turn an HDMI cable into a component or VGA and other things Interesting. while keeping the HDCP support uh, in place, which doesn't work according to the legalese, but apparently they're selling it legally. That's an entirely different conversation. Ed from Greenbelt, Maryland writes in, hey guys, love the show. Could you please review Western Digital's WDTV Live Plus HD media player? This box seems to get lost in all the discussion of current and upcoming set-top boxes, but the specs make it sound like a real contender, especially with its support for my beloved MKV format. Okay, I didn't, he didn't say beloved, I said beloved. I'd love to hear how you think it stacks up to the Roku XDS, the Pop Box, the Apple TV, etc. Thank Thanks, Ed from Greenbelt, Maryland. Okay. You actually, this man reviewed the WDTV Live I Plus did. back in December of 2009. Last year. Yeah. I well, it, no, it was cool. It, it, technically, he it was the WDTV Live, which is the same box minus the Netflix support, which is the only difference between the Live and the Plus is the Netflix support. I, I wanted one because of, like you mentioned, it, it supports a lot of different mm -hmm. audio and video formats. That was probably number one. But two, it, I could just plug a USB storage device into it and have a very selectable output format system over HDMI. I could I pretty much select any standard or high definition video format I needed and to be able to output that or or a native output mode. Right. So as a source device or, or as a media player for other people, I'm looking at it as a source device, but for a, just a standard media box of a tiny size that you could put into your home theater, it, it seems like a no brainer. Right. Although, yeah, as long as your videos are encoded properly and things like that, you know, it's it's just like any other product. It helps to have good video to put into it, but <laughs> the flexibility of that product and its price point, too, are really what appealed to me. And you have a little remote control that comes with it. Yeah. So I thought it was good stuff. Yeah, good it's good stuff. In terms of the boxes you listed, it's, it's pretty much the only one that supports MKV files. Apple TV does not. The Roku box does not. Um, the Pop box might, but it, the I have been so frustrated with the interface, I'm just not going to talk about the Pop box right now. However, its predecessor from Siabas, which would be the Popcorn Hour, the 200 Ooh. and 100, actually, I believe, did pretty solid support of the MKV nice. files. Nice hardware. Yeah. Very nice hardware. And I think the pop box is going to catch up. The interface is a little rough. They're slowly, over time, making it better. Always so, cool. Yeah. Hey, guys, we hope you enjoyed this episode of HD Nation. As always, we want to know what you think. So please send your comments, questions, or suggestions to hdnation at revision3.com. You can always find us on Twitter, twitter.com slash hdnation, or on YouTube. Our channel is youtube.com slash techhd. And we got links about pretty much everything we talked about in today's show in the show notes at hdnation.tv on the individual show page. Nice. Plus, you'll find all the links to subscribe to the show, so please subscribe and watch. And until next time, thanks for watching. I'm Patrick Dorton. And I'm Robert Heron. We'll see you next week. Yeah.